So it's farewell to one of Chelsea's greatest ever centre forwards. The pedestal previously reserved for Bentley, Greaves and Osgood must now find room for one more. To the last, Didier Drogba was the man for the big occasion and he bowed out in a blaze of glory that was almost too good to be true. Didier arrived from Marseille in the first summer of Jose Mourinho. I'm very happy to be here and I, I hope it's, uh, it will be a very good uh, and very long uh, adventure with Chelsea and with uh, all the, the, the fans of Chelsea. He scored his first goal in his third game at Crystal Palace and was adapting well to the Premier League and Champions League when a stomach injury sustained in October at home to Liverpool required surgery. He was out for two months and struggled to regain his form. A knee injury also interrupted his season and in all he missed three months, so his return of 16 goals in 30 starts was still a major achievement. Mourinho used him cleverly, rarely for 90 minutes at a time, sharing the striker duties with Gudjonsson, who also scored 16. Drogba showed both strengths and weaknesses. He came back early from injury because no one else was available, but then got sent off in Barcelona for a second yellow card. Just days later, he started on his road to becoming Chelsea's greatest ever cup final scorer by putting us ahead against Liverpool in the Carling Cup final. It's there! Drogba scored! Chelsea are in the lead for the first time in the match. And he showed his increasing influence in the Champions League quarter-final, dominating Bayern Munich aerially by setting up Frank Lampard and then scoring the fourth himself. Away, he headed one of the goals of the tournament. Didier Drogba has sent Chelsea into the Champions League semi-finals. Didier's second season began with a brace in the Community Shield at Cardiff and we soon began to see his creative talent too. Despite not scoring himself, he was involved in all four goals in a 4-1 thumping of Liverpool at Anfield, and it was quickly becoming clear that his skills were not limited merely to power and strength. But at Chelsea, he was having problems with the public. Away to Fulham, he was caught out handballing when trying to equalise. At home to Manchester City, he got away with it, and then, having gone down dramatically once too often, was jeered when named man of the match but the all-time low led to an all-time high. In the very next home game against West Ham, he was brilliant and shown mass appreciation as 10-man Chelsea won 4-1. His desire to stand up on creating the fourth goal was a new Drogba. Again, he finished the season with 16 goals, but his third season was one of the very best in the history of Chelsea Football Club. He scored an incredible 33 goals in 54 starts, with 20 scored by the turn of the year. Not one was a penalty. Many were truly extraordinary, either in quality or importance, or in many cases, both. Drogba Sheffield! Oh, yes! Didier Drogba! He was clearly by now the best forward in the world, and arguably the best player. He scored both goals in the Carling Cup final as Chelsea beat Arsenal 2-1. Plenty of blue shirts around, one of them's Drogba, and he scored again! It is a brilliant header, and it might just be enough to win Chelsea the Carling Cup. And he scored the only goal in the FA Cup final, five minutes from the end of extra time. The man of the moment was a man in demand. Not surprisingly, that year took its toll. He missed the start of the 07-08 campaign, but in his first start at Reading scored a wonderful winner. Typically, he set up Lampard to score the winning goal at home to Portsmouth, which put Chelsea top of the league. But injuries to those two, followed by the departure of his beloved Jose Mourinho, left the always emotional Drogba very low. For the remainder of the season, he struggled for physical fitness and mental sharpness, but he remained on his day the best centre-forward in the world. His winner at Valencia got new manager Avram Grant's era on track, and he continued to score and make goals at an impressive rate, again having to play all 90 minutes, alone in attack, whenever available. He finished the season with 15 goals in 29 starts, including yet another final strike in the Carling Cup defeat to Tottenham and two in the glorious Champions League semi-final at home to Liverpool. Great save by Reina. Drogba! It's in! one nothing Chelsea! In the final, he so nearly restored his top status recognition with the fans, only for a post to deny him a brilliant winner. In extra time, though, he restored his most frustrating status with the fans by getting himself sent off. A red card, the third of Didier Drogba's Chelsea career, and who knows, maybe the last. The following season, Luis Felipe Scolari took charge. 
It was a difficult first half to the season as Didier struggled for fitness and form. His first goal didn't arrive until the League Cup defeat to Burnley, a game which also resulted in a ban. When Gus Hiddink took over, a rejuvenated Drogba scored some important goals, including the winner against Juventus in the Champions League. But when Barcelona stole the semi-final, Didier's protests would land him in hot water once again. His season still ended on a high, though, against Everton, with another cup final goal and winner's medal. Under Carlo Ancelotti, he began well with a double at home to Hull. And by the time he set off for the Africa Cup of Nations again, he'd already scored 18 times in 21 games. Upon his return, he continued to score for fun as we closed in on an historic double. He scored the winner at Old Trafford that sent us top with five games to go. He then scored a second-half hat-trick in the final day demolition of Wigan as we reclaimed the league title and he secured the golden boot. Inevitably, he then scored the winner in the cup final win over Portsmouth 2. The fans voted him player of the year. Following hernia surgery in the summer, Didier returned with a hat-trick against West Brom, but illness and injury persisted as the side struggled through winter. Late in the campaign, he did come off the bench to score a Champions League goal at Old Trafford, but he couldn't prevent us being eliminated from the competition. He began what would prove to be his final season in a Chelsea shirt on the bench. His first goal came late against Swansea. A red card for Fernando Torres in the same game gave him a run in the side before a fateful afternoon at Loftus Road, coupled with international duties, saw him miss almost a month. His return at the end of November brought a run of important goals, including a brace against Valencia in the crucial match day six victory. He scored his 150th Chelsea goal against Aston Villa, pulling him level with Peter Osgood and Roy Bentley in the all-time charts, although the milestone was somewhat lost amidst a shock defeat as Didier headed for Africa once again. He returned to find a side in turmoil. In Roberto Di Matteo's first league game in charge, though, Didier scored the only goal in a home win over Stoke, and what followed four days later at home to Napoli was vintage Drogba. His goal began the comeback as the Italians were swept aside and Blues fans were once again in love with their striker. A toe injury at the end of March brought frustration, but he was back in the side by April, and the King of Wembley pulled out one of his very best Chelsea goals in the semi-final thumping of Tottenham. Nice spin from Drogba! Oh, yes! what a goal! Just three days later, Barcelona came to the bridge, and just as in 2006, Didier scored the only goal of the game. The following week, he led the line, mostly from left-back, on that epic night at the Nou Camp. Fittingly and predictably, he marked his last FA Cup final with another Wembley goal, adding yet another winner's medal to his collection. And then he topped it all with that last gasp equaliser at Munich and the penalty that saw him and his colleagues finally lift the European Cup. Didier Drogba with maybe his last kick of a ball for Chelsea Football Club. Berries in! Chelsea win the Champions League! His tally of three Premier Leagues, four FA Cups, two League Cups and that one Champions League makes him the most decorated centre forward in club history. He's also the club's fourth highest all-time scorer with 157 goals in 341 games.